for the student athletes. We also have some folks on Zoom. For those of you that are on Zoom, uh, you can raise your hand and we'll get to you. In fact, for this one, we'll start on Zoom. So Christos, go ahead with your uh, question for the student athletes, please. Hello, Christos Chalice, DNA Greece. Hope you're doing well. Questions for Oscar and Sabir. What are the expectations for the tournament and how, how well prepared the, is the team for, for this challenge? Oscar, let's start with you. Go ahead. Can you repeat one more time, please? Yeah, how, how well prepared is the team for the tournament and what is the biggest challenge for you? Uh, the defense will be working like uh, we know this team is going to come out trying to do a lot of different things, but coach has been preparing us to be ready. So we're going to move well and uh, we're ready to go. Our defense is pretty good and uh, we're excited. I can't wait to play tomorrow. Severe? Um, I think the biggest challenge, obviously, is like, you know, getting past the first game because Coach Cal says uh, the first game is going to be the hardest. And then from then on, it's just, um, you know, it's quick turnarounds. Each weekend, if you win the next game, the, if you get a day break, and there's another game after that. So, uh, you know, just being quick minded, knowing that it's this next place, next possession, and also just staying together. Um, because at the end of the day, all these teams are really good. You know, basketball is a game of runs. So just being able to sustain um, everyone's run, you know, take that and counter it with our own run and stay together. Let's get to WHAS right here, then we'll get to Jerry after that. Go ahead. Yeah, this question, Ken Spencer, WHAS 11. This is question is for Kellen and, and Savir. Kellen, you've played in an NCAA tournament game before, but it's, it's probably been a minute. What are your kind of emotions going into to this run? And, and Savir, the, the same thing for you. I, I, is this your first NCAA tournament experience? And, and what kind of are those emotions are like? Uh, for me, it's kind of like a new level of excitement because I'm uh, with a different team. And we've gone through adversity and we've gone through uh, an entire season together. Um, so it was a new level of excitement uh, to, to go through this and, and, and be on Kentucky. Uh, I mean, it was, it was amazing for us to get to March Madness and play Kentucky when I was at Davidson. Uh, but I'm really excited to, uh, to embrace this challenge with, with our team. and. and uh, we try our best to take care of business. Um, and for me, just being my first experience, um, this is something I'm super grateful for. Because um, as a kid, every basketball player's dream is to be here and get to the big dance. Um, you know, even at the end of it, you're watching that one shining moment. Uh, so, I mean, it's just all surreal. I'm just taking it in day by day. But obviously, you know, I'm, I came here to win, came here to compete at the highest level. But uh, this is definitely a blessing. Is I'm, I'm having fun and I'm continuing to have fun and uh, continue to win as well. Jerry? Yeah, Jerry Tipton, Lexington Herald Leader. For each of you guys, Coach Cal said that he had individual meetings after the SEC tournament and asked you guys, if I heard him right, to define your roles. I wonder how you defined them, each of you, and what do you think he was driving at in asking that? Man, Jerry, you come everywhere with us, huh? Yeah, you stalking us or something, bro? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think. All of us can say the meetings were very productive. Uh, and, you know, my, my role has been consistent all year to, to make shots and, um, and to help us and to help defend and, and to be reliable on defense. Uh, and also, I, that's what I said when I was asked, and then he said, and, and to fly, which is consistent with our whole team, to get up and down the court and, and run the court um, as well as we can. So I think all of us have a, have a good uh, concentration on, on on what to do for our team and, and how to be most productive in, in helping us win. Um, my role has stayed the same no matter where I've played uh, the game of basketball. And that's something that I prided myself on is being able to have a style of play um, where that wherever I go, I won't have to change my game. Um, and that's to play with ultimate pace, um, be disruptive on both ends of the court, get guys open shots, um, you know, play you know, with a passion, with a smile on my face, um, and, obviously, and ultimately be the extension of a coach, of the coaching staff. Um, you know, me and Coach Cal have to have the strongest connections, to know, um, you know, what's, what's, what to run, um, who to get involved, and uh, be a leader on the court. You know, sometimes that's kind of hard just with the emotions of basketball, but I have great teammates that pick me up along the way to make sure I'm, I'm you know, even killed, and um, I'm, I'm headed in the right direction as well. My role, um, like Coach told me, is always the same, like pray with a lot of energy, 
uh, defend basketball, grab a lot of rebound. Like you gotta communicate. I do better on those things, but like you communicate, he was a little bit tougher because I, I, I was not doing a better job on that. So in this tournament, it is a great opportunity for me to communicate a lot with my teammates. And I got to just bring high energy. And I know when I'm, uh, I'm on fire, running, do a lot of different things, I bring a lot of problem on, on somebody who's trying to stop me. So if I keep doing exactly the same thing and I keep bringing more energy, I think um, we're in the right place for this team. Let's go right here, front right. Yep. Kyle Tucker with The Athletic. Um, for Oscar and Kellen, I just wonder how you would describe the way some of your plays uh, and also describe what it's like when he's really bothering somebody else what, to watch them. What, how how do, does the other guy respond? Well, I've had to go against him in practice um, a couple times, and it's, it's not a lot of fun bringing the ball up against him. So, uh, but when you're, on, when you're one of the other four guys on the court, uh, it's awesome to see him get under guys' legs and, and pressure them and, um, and just cause havoc on, on, on defense. And um, just overall, I mean, you guys see the, the, the impact he has on the game with his, uh, with his pace and his push. I mean, we can get the ball below the free throw line at the other end with 25 on the shot clock. Um, and a lot of times that starts with, with his push and just his burst and his ability to look up the floor and, and, and uh, Put pressure on the defense, so you know he, he's a, he's a joy to play with, and he gets us all involved, and he's ahead of our snake. So uh, we rely on him a good amount, I'd say. Uh, he has bring a lot of energy on the team. He's a great defender. He do a lot of different things. Um, for me to play with somebody like him, I love it because the way he run, I run too. Because I'm always running, keep screaming on his side. You better. Pass me the ball because I'm by your side. <laughs> <laughs> like I love him, I love his energy and everything he's bringing this team. But this tournament, we're gonna need more severe, like to keep doing the same thing. And he can see the floor really good, make it passes. Um, I'm so excited, and um, we're gonna have a meeting, talk to them about everything. And I think we are on the right track right now to be the best we can be. You have any home meetings with people? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the gentleman here in the ball cap over here. John Hale with the Courier Journal. This is for Kellen over here on the left, or right, sorry. Here, get you right. Your left. Um, you mentioned playing against Kentucky as a freshman. Can you walk us back what your emotions were leading up to that game and, and maybe what lessons you can give your teammates about your opponents, the lower seeds, their mindsets in this tournament? Yeah, well, we, um, we were all. My whole team was on a emotional and uh, high because we had just uh, won the Atlantic 10 tournament and we felt really good and, and, and we truly thought we were going to beat Kentucky. Obviously, that didn't happen, but uh, we, we were fairly confident. We had a, a pretty uh, good spirit about us and, and a level of excitement that I think ran through the whole team. Um, and like I said, though, it's, it's different here. Uh, we we understand that um, everybody in this tournament is either here because they had gotten that large bid or they're champions in their own right. Uh, so, I mean, St. St. Peter's is a very good team. We we can't uh, take the the seeding for for granted or think that this is going to be an easy task at all. Um, so it, it's we're in a, it's a different predicament for me com compared to my, my experience at Davidson, but uh, just the overall focus of, of trying to execute and play the best game you can uh, remains consistent. For those of you that are participating on Zoom, please raise your hand. We'll try to get to a couple of Zoom questions if we can. Another gentleman in the back <coughs> right there standing up has a question. Go ahead. Daryl Burr with Cat's Paws in Lexington. For Oscar, can you tell me how playing soccer when you were younger makes you a better basketball player? And for the other two guys, was there a sport that you played when you were younger that maybe plays into who you are now? Uh, I would say soccer really helped me because uh, I played goalie and I was back in defense. Soccer really helped me like to move my feet and catch uh, catch a ball. I was goalie. You got to be able to catch the ball when somebody trying to kick and score. You got to jump. So in the basketball, that's why every time even I go for a rebound, I just go with two hands and snatch the ball. 
And um, he helped me a lot, move my feet, because you gotta move your feet to stop people in defense. That really helped me with basketball today. Severe? Uh, I play soccer as well, and I'm um, a little Chinese. baseball. <laughs> I think soccer obviously helped with just my endurance because I think that's um, one of my gifts that I have naturally. Like, you know, some people are, are naturally gifted with they can run and jump. And um, I think my, one of my gifts is my speed and my endurance, um, being able to play for long stretches. And I think that ultimately um, came with soccer so young, just being out there playing for hours and hours. And I played a little baseball too. So just the um, anticipation of where the ball is going to go um, when, when the guy hits it, I'm um, being able to kind of move your feet at the same time. So. I think all of that comes comes into play with basketball as well. Kellen? Kellen wasn't an athlete until uh, high school. <laughs> no, I, I played soccer, baseball. Uh, I was a swimmer as well. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and credit all my past experience in sports to why I'm, I'm pretty good at Trash. basketball. <laughs> um, but I, I guess I resonate with all the things Xavier said as well. Let's go back to Kent. We'll get to Jerry after that. Kellen, a lot of folks have talked about the, the performance of, in your last game against Tennessee. How do you feel about your game coming into this tournament? And for Sevier, how important is Kellen to, to your team and what you guys want to bring offensively? Yeah, I, I acknowledged the game on Saturday. Uh, I played like crap, and there's, um, you know, I, I own that and uh, didn't shoot well and, and just didn't have a good game. So, um, but at the end of the day, I think you know I've certainly proven myself this year, and, and I don't think one game, regardless of the magnitude of that game, is is definitive of the player I am or of the season I've had. So, I think the best thing for me and what I've tried to do is just put it in the rearview mirror. Um, obviously, learn from it and, and improve on some of the things that I could have improved on, and be more shot ready and, and move on to the next play. Um, but. That game is, is, is in the past, and we have an uh, incredible opportunity here as a, as a group to, to do something really special in, in the NCAA tournament, and that's what I'm focused on. And As long as I play to win, I think the rest will take care of itself. Um, you know, obviously what Kellen does for us on the offensive end as far as spacing um, and being able to make shots is vital You know, for our team success offensively, but um, Kellen is as important on the defensive end as he is on the offensive end. Um, you know, he kind of has that nickname Steady Eddie. And um, that's just because, like, how reliable he is on the defensive side. So maybe he's not, you know, making shots. You know, that can go for anybody. But the way Kellen is defensively, the way he talks, he communicates. Um, he's not getting scored on. He's down there fighting. All that stuff is, account is you know, part of the uh, accountability that he has that leads us to winning. And um, when he's making shots, I mean, I mean, he's, he's one of the best players, one of the most efficient players in the country. And, um, you know, when he finally, you know, decides to put it on the deck and shoot a floater or, you know, get to his pull up, like, man, that's 2,000 points. Like, when you're not just a spot up shooter, you can't score 2,000 points just sitting in the corner or making catch and shoot threes. Like, he's a, he's a wired scorer. So we kind of encourage him and empower him. Man, like, get to your bag. Like, do what you do. Um, when it's your time, be aggressive and, you know, get to the paint, make plays. Uh, because as good as you shoot the ball, I mean, you're a scorer. You have, you know, the best touch. I'm around the, around the rim and around the paint that I've ever been around. So we, we empower him to definitely do more than just catch and shoot or whatever he thinks he's, he's supposed to do. We want him to do more. Hate to do this, but unfortunately. Uh, yeah, John Clay, Lexington Arrow leader. Uh, John, a lot of reports that Kenny Payne's going to be named the coach of Louisville on Friday. Uh, what do you think of that, and how do you think Kenny would do at Louisville? Well, first of all, he's a dear friend. And I will tell you that they could not hire anybody that will do a better job than Kenny Payne. Great coach, great human being, great husband, great father, uh, Louisville graduate. Um, I may say he should have been hired before there, but you know what? They get him, they got the best of the best. Next question, over right here. Cal, what was the tweak? that you made this week? If you can outline that it's for us. to my be back. Great. My back has been <laughs> killing me. And, and one that you probably may actually answer. You had these individual meetings talking about defining roles. Three of those guys sort of defined what they said there was. How did you feel like those went? Did you feel like guys, before you had to tell them, did you feel like they understood their role? Yeah, they, they all told me, and I said, well, just do that. 
<laughs> That's what the, the meeting was. But let me say this. The injury to our two guards, because we survived it, we thought now they're coming back and we're okay. We're not where we were when we had them all and we were going hard. I mean, you think about how we were playing and who we were beating and what we were doing. So getting beat in the SEC tournament was like a godsend because we came, we scrimmaged an hour and 15 minutes. We scrimmaged 45 minutes yesterday. What? What if someone gets hurt? I know. I know because I'm, that's always in the forefront of my mind. But we needed to get back to free and loose and open and playing off of one another and the roles of what we needed to do. And the only way you could do that is scrimmage. And because we got 10 really good players, really we got more than that, but we could put 10 guys on the floor that it was competitive and they went at each other. So my feeling was, and my thought at the time, we can't do it in the NCAA tournament. We're just dragging game to game, which we have been doing. And so I felt we needed to go and, and let's go and let's do this and, you know, a tweak here and there. And, and um, well, let me just say it, these guys, this is, I don't know when this is going to end, but when it does, it'll be a sad day for me. Um, these guys, every day I go in, today, I can hold them accountable and there's no babies. How about having two players like Damian Collins and Bryce Hopkins could play just about anywhere in the country, but they're behind players that are playing better than them right now. And because they're so young, they're playing on a team of older players that are more prepared than them, and they're coming every day to get better. They understand the grind of this. I mean, it, unless you coach, you don't understand that is why we're a great team. And good teams have good players, and everybody in here has good players. Every, all 68 teams have good players. The great teams have great teammates. And there may be 60 of them, but I know we're one of the 60 that we have great teammates. Let's get to Mark right here, then we'll get to Ken after that. Mark? Hey, John. I'm Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, What's your impression of the job that Shaheen has done at St. Peter's? And uh, I don't know if you knew much of him as a player, but uh, I think you did. Uh, and and it, is there any part of that that mirrors the way he coaches? Can I, can I tell you what bothers you? When you get older, Austin Crozier just did an interview with me and said, do you remember your home visit with me? Ha, <laughs> please stop talking about how long ago stuff was. And, and Shaheen the same. Um, what Shaheen was as a player was a competitive will to win fight. And I'm not saying fist fight. I'm saying fight for balls 50-50, get his team together, lead. And you know what? I watch his team now. I'm like, whoa. And not only do they play for 40 minutes, they never let go of the rope. They're not going to against us. I don't care. They will not let go of the rope. But the other side of it is they run really good stuff. They run good stuff for their team. They got really good players. And, you know, you look at them and you're, you're like, as I'm not that old. I'm saying I'm old. I'm not. I'm 54. But you look at him and you say, man, I'm proud that I've watched him in his career and what he's done as a player and then being able to carry it over. Because it's not easy to just say, well, I'm a good player, so now I'm a good coach. No. And part of it is you have to learn how to be a great teammate yourself to be that coach, servant leader. And I watch him coach. I'm telling you, he's phenomenal, phenomenal. Let's go ahead and go to the back. Go ahead. Yeah, Daryl Bird with the Cast Falls. John, I know you weren't happy or at least mystified. The SEC didn't get in as many teams as you wanted. But they did scatter the four best into different regions, so the potential's there that all four could get to the Final Four. What do you think? How about of we that? try to win a game tomorrow? But that's fine. I just wonder how much of a, of a little bit of a driving force that is for all of you guys to show this committee the SEC is much better than. Yeah, it's I don't. I don't. I'm not that guy that you know. We're going to show you. We don't do that. I think anytime you get your team that they're not in that loose and free mode, the physiology is close to fear 
when it's anger or revenge and all that stuff, and it's fine when it's going good, but the minute it goes south, that same feeling turns into fear, so I don't do it. Um, but at the end of the day, the, what happens will speak for itself. I don't have to say anything. Disappointed that Texas A&M didn't get in. I am. Um, you know, I, I said it from the beginning that I felt we had the best league. Well, we got a chance to show it or not. They, you're not going to know what happens until it happens. So we'll see. Kent Spencer, WHAS 11. John, I think other than Kellen, I don't know if you have any players on this roster that have played on, in the NCAA tournament. Do you, even though we, they're We old, have a couple. Okay, so they're older, but do you have to have a, 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 like a message for these guys going into this thing? Well, I have reminded them a couple times that please listen to what I'm saying because I've done this a few times. How many of you had done, you know, so please listen to what I'm saying. And this is, uh, they're locked in. I'm just telling you, I, I, when, when you talk about, when I met with Dante Allen, and he was so upbeat, and so, and then he said, Coach, I just want you to know I appreciate you. Think about that. He's not playing much. And he left the room, and I'm like, man, I hope something good happens for him. I told Bryce today, his spirit in our practice was ridiculous. Bryce, you have no idea how I'm hoping you have another LSU game. But it's not always how things work out. And, you know, it, it's, you're, you're talking about a group that they've got to experience this, winning in this tournament. They've got to experience advancing or not advancing. I tried to tell them today, you know, you, you can't play. You, you got to play, and you, you know, this is, you walk into a cliff, either you jump over the cliff or you go the other way, and the other guy jumps off the cliff. I mean, it's, that's what makes this what it is. Um, you let somebody, whoever it is, you give teams a chance, they, they beat you, and it doesn't matter. There's been a two beaten by a 15, am I right? There's been a 16 that beat a one. So if that's the case, anybody can beat anybody in this tournament. I don't even know what you asked me, but there's my answer. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to the gentleman just to your right, right over there. Yep. Blake Salen, WPSD. John, just, just how do you prepare for this St. Peter's team that's so strong defensively? Um, I've watched tape, and again, I'm, I'm telling you, that, that's a culture. That's what Shaheen has built that they take unbelievable pride and they're physical and they're long. Um, so, you know, we're, we are who we are at this point. We've prepared from day one. Everything I talk about is March. We don't talk about conference championships. We don't talk about conference tournaments. Everything is to prepare us for this moment. Now, you have to understand in our league, how many teams defend and physical and long in our league? It's like craziness. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. It is. And so, I, you know, I think we're ready, but we'll see. Let's go to Jerry down here, and we'll go back over this way. Jerry? Jerry Tiffin, Lexington Herald Leader. John, you've been in a lot of NCAA tournaments, a lot of memorable games. I'm wondering what stands out in your mind of past experiences you've had in um, probably the first being the national championship game, another being that losing in the championship game a couple times. And, you know, another is a shot clock violation that changed the rules to the game. And, you know, I'd, I'd say that, but it's just that we've historically have had teams that you know, you, you can either play to win or play not to lose. And I've had teams that have played to win. Um, different team, one year was five freshmen, got to the final game. This year it's a veteran team. Let's see how they perform. Um, I think they're ready, but it, you, you don't know. <laughs> you walk into the game, they'll all say, how you feel, coach? And I go, does it really matter? It doesn't matter how I feel. It's how they feel. 
get to this side over here. Yep. Sure. I know you talked a little bit about Kenny Payne taking potentially taking the job at Louisville. Do you think it will change the rivalry at all to have him as their coach? Will fans feel as much vitriol towards a, you know a coach that used to be an assistant on your staff? Well, Rick Barnes and I have been friends for 40 years, and I encouraged him to take the Tennessee job. Um, and he and I have remained friends even though they've beaten us a bunch. We're friends. Kenny Payne, whatever happens with these games, will be friends. Um, it should lighten up their side, our side. Like, look, it's one game a year. <laughs> Who cares? It's life and death. I'll jump off a bridge. What? It's one game. I've said it for 13 years. And they, look, They've been to national titles. They've won national titles, Final Fours. You ready with what I'm going to tell you? With different coaches, which means it's not about the coach. That program is one of the programs. They deserve a coach like Kenny Payne. He and I talked a few days ago. I have not talked to him today. I did leave Mass, and I texted him. I said, I prayed for you today. So just so you know, I'm thinking about him, but I don't want to be in the middle of his business. I'm just here if he needs me. And whether he does it or not, at some point he'll let me know he did it or here's why I didn't do it. Um, but I'll say this, as a coach, as a man, as a husband, as a father um, who's into basketball, will be in the gym at 11 o'clock at night. So if, they, if that's who they name, they made the right choice. I wish they'd have made it four years ago, you know, but you know what? He's getting an opportunity if he chooses to take it at a great institution and in our state. The state of Kentucky deserves to have both programs. And we played in the Final Four together, right? Who won that game, Jerry? I believe it was Kentucky. Okay. But we, I mean, that's how it should be. What happened? Who did you say won it? Okay. Makes you mad? No? No? Okay. That's just the way you said it. It sounded like you were mad. Let's get one more over here to wrap it up. Cal, you talked about uh, seeing Shaheen as a player. I think you signed one of his high school teammates, Winston Smith, at, at UMass. Did you recruit him too? Were there any conversations along those lines? When, when I was at UMass, if a kid considered the Big East, and there were two or three Big East schools, we didn't. When I was at Memphis, if they told me it was North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, Georgia Tech, I'd just, okay, let's go get somebody else. It's just how we did it. And so with him, the Big East back then, you don't, I mean, the Big East is great. Jay and I are friend, friends with a bunch of their coaches, and they're, you know, Eddie Cooley, they're, they're, it's a terrific league. But when it was less teams, and each team had three NBA players on it, it was ridiculous. And every kid, in the East, your whole goal was to go to the Big East. So if he said to me, Big East, I probably didn't. I probably went in and got Winston. Winston's a great kid. Coaching, he's coaching himself. He's also coaching. So 